I think everybody by the end of the year, uh, unless you are an opponent, loved the way that Jeremy Sohan played as a freshman at Baylor. And there were thoughts maybe he would stay another year. Kendall Brown and, and of course, uh, Jeremy both decide to stay in the draft. And there are thoughts that Jeremy Sohan will be a lottery pick, and that would not be a surprise at all. And uh, Mike Vorkanov joins us. He wrote an article on the, in theathletic.com about Jeremy Sohan, some of which, of course, we've known because we've covered him or we've talked to him or uh, of all the lead up to him joining Baylor in Waco, but it was a great article. Mike, thanks for your time. Did you find him to be a incredibly interesting young man? Yeah, I thought he was, uh, he was very fascinating. One probably one of the more captivating people that I've talked to um, this year around the league. So one of the things that he does, and you mentioned this, and we saw this even in the loss to North Carolina that ran him out of the tournament, is he gets under people's skin. He has got a maturity factor that seems to be almost like a fifth-year senior rather than a true freshman in college. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's something that stands out about him. He's moved around so much in his uh, his life and even his uh, short but limited basketball career. You know, he's played in the States. He's played in uh, Germany and lived in Germany for a bit. You know, he played for the Polish national team. So I think that's given him some uh, experience that might not be, uh, I don't know, normal for an 18-year-old uh, kid or 18 year old draft prospect at this stage in their life. Mike, how much does that help him going into Thursday night that he is well traveled and mature? You know, I, I know that the, the NBA draft is much more on potential than maybe any other draft that there is because there's only two rounds and you have to swing big. But how much does his, his, his past and, and the where he's been kind of help him, you know, make teams confident about him? You know, I think they see signs of what he can do when thrown into a, a you know, quasi-NBA, uh, like professional experience, right? When he got thrown into the Polish national team um, with veterans, with guys who are much older than him and his ability to integrate himself into a team like that. You know, when he goes off to an NBA team, it won't be the first time he leaves home, right? Um, it, you know, he, he had to do that when he went to Lalo Mir in Indiana, uh, when he was uh, about 16, right? Then he had, then he did it again when he went to Germany um, to play for the Orange Academy there. And so uh, he's even lived abroad, you know, going from his home in the UK to going uh, to Baylor and living in Waco for, you know, whatever, nine months or whatever it was. So these are not new experiences for him when he joins an NBA team. It's something that he's done before. And obviously the hardest part, I think, for any rookie is not just the basketball, but it is uh, the huge change in their life and and their lifestyle and just what it means for them on a human level, as much as it does a, a, you know, professional one. Do you have any spoilers on what color his hair will be uh, when the draft rolls around? And also how much of that conversation was kind of interesting. I didn't expect when I was reading the article to read about hair kind of right out of the gates, but that is sort of his, as you point out, his Rodman kind of, you know, thing that people pick up on, but it's not who he is uh, to that extent. No, I, I wish I had found out which color he's going to go with, uh, <laughs> for tomorrow night. Uh, maybe if he has a tip on which team will draft him, right? You can right. kind of color coordinate. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, the hair is interesting. I just thought it was, I, I thought it was interesting because, you know, it is the most visible part of him. It, it kind of makes him stand out on a court. Uh, especially when he's got, when he had that highlighter green hair or when he goes with the pink hair, right? Like it makes him stand out on a basketball court and it's so divergent from what he is as a player, uh, where his skill set allows him to blend in. Uh, and it is something that people ask him about. Like I said, you know, he met with the Celtics in, um, in May at the draft combine. And that was the very first thing lobbed at him, uh, by an executive during the interview. So it's, I think it's kind of an icebreaker for him. Uh, I think it's kind of been a, a bit of a defining trait once he cut his hair. Uh, this past season and started dyeing it every, uh, you know, different color. So, I, you know, it's, yeah, everyone kind of has their niche, right? And I think that's his a little bit. Is he, and your article at the top even says this, may be the perfect for modern-day NBA because there's no positions. There's no centers. You don't even hear much about forwards. There's ones and threes and fives or whatever. Is he the perfect fit for right now the current NBA? Yeah, I think so. And you're right. You know, there are, you know, it's basically broken down now into like guards and wings and bigs. Um, and, and his ability to kind of shape shift and go up and down the lineup and guarding guards and defending wings. And, you know, he played the five a little bit, the small ball five, and he has the size where he can do it in the NBA for a portion of a game and probably, you know, in the playoffs as well, where bigs get played off the floor. 
Um, I think that'll allow him to make a smoother transition uh, that will kind of make up for what he's missing right now on the offensive end. And it allows him to have a softer landing in terms of his career because no matter what, he can always contribute uh, on the defensive end and give, that gives him time for offense to develop. Mike, what teams do you think are the best scheme fits for him as far as uh, stepping in and contributing right away? I, I think it would be really interesting. I'm like the Pelicans. The Spurs, um, the Thunder, obviously. Uh, you know, I think he'd be a good fit on the Hornets. Really, it's any team that can play with some pace, get out in the open floor, uh, and allow him to do a number of different things on the defensive end, and, and that play with a you know a good point guard who can help him offensively and create for him a little bit, uh, allow him to slow into uh, the offensive side of things. Mike, how much do you think he got out of that one year in Waco? I mean, it was a short time, but that's just kind of the, the lay of the land in basketball uh, sometimes. In a different era, maybe he doesn't play college ball at all, but how much do you think just that, that one year with Scott Drew and the, and the team uh, helped further mold him as a, as a player and a person? I think it did a lot for him. You know, obviously it helped boost him as an NBA draft prospect, sure. right? He wasn't that heralded as a recruit. Um, you know, I was talking to one of his uh, coaches and he was just saying, you know, like five years ago, he was just playing club ball in the UK. Um, and now he's about to get drafted. I think one of the things, I think it was Bill Peterson who told me it helped kind of, he feels toughen him up a little bit when he got to Baylor and got to play in college basketball um, and gave him that sort of um, physicality that maybe he hadn't had as much before. So that and it kind of exposing him to the uh, American style of play probably helped because I think one of the things that you you hear about often enough when players come over from Europe into the NBA is because they hadn't had uh, as much experience playing kind of uh, in the streets and less formalized basketball, it takes them a, a bit of time to adjust to that and play a little more selfishly. I think that is uh, not the case in Europe. And, and, you know, Jeremy obviously has a jump on that by coming over and playing in, uh, in Baylor for a year. We'll have Bill Peterson, and he's quoted in this article, but he'll be on with us in about an hour but I love the answer from John Jacobs. He's the kind of guy, Jeremy, who can live in Tibet for six months and then turn around and live in Croatia on a lake with his family for six months. That that's that perfectly summarizes him. Yeah, he's a, he's a different dude in a good way. I think he's got a lot of different interests, and I think he's you know I think he's introspective, and I think um, you know he can as he's shown already, he can go to different places and find. Uh, a niche for himself and a place for himself. And, and, you know, I think it's important because one of the things he said is he's, you know, his self-awareness um, stood out to me just about the way that he would come to any team and be able to find his role and know what his role was. And that's so big, especially for rookies. Um, and, and I think that's a kind of a defining piece of his personality. Hey, uh, thanks for the time, Mike. Good luck. The draft of course is tomorrow and Jeremy Sohan, Kendall Brown, a part of it. And uh, Jeremy, most likely a lottery pick. We appreciate your time and, uh, and appreciate the insight on your article. Thank you very much. Mike Vorkanoff uh, with TheAthletic.com and his thoughts about Jeremy Sohan, the article in TheAthletic.com. When we come back, John Wilmer, 